Now let's look at this. Oh yeah. Well friends, I've been toting around this beast of a drill press for about a year and a half now. Some of you may remember the day I found it over there at the scrapyard. Today's the day we're going to start working on it. Okay, now this is a really substantial base and a nice three and a half inch diameter column. And this table is the real reason I got this, because this table is just fantastic. And it's got the gear driven elevator on it, and I really wanted that. But have a look up here. This casting is cracked. So, yeah, and look at this other crack here on the other side. So, this whole top end is pretty well useless, but there are a lot of great parts. This is a really nice quill arrangement on it, should clean up and go back to normal. My intent is to build a whole new head for this thing. So, that's this week's project. We'll begin by taking it apart. So this is the height adjustment crank and it has obviously become disconnected from the drive gear that engages this rack. Yet another thing to deal with. Now some of you may know my friend PJ Galati, son of a junk hunter. Um, he assures me this is a Taiwan piece of crap, which I believe is true. But so far all the threads I've encountered are SAE. So look right there. Even that's cracked. What happened to this? They must have dropped this off a forklift or something. Anyway, that slot in there is so you can drive a wedge in to knock this Morse taper out and remove the chuck. So the first thing we're going to have to do is make a wedge for that. Just a piece of eighth inch bar. In the grand scheme of things, that taper's not looking too bad. Interesting thing about this, this is the first drill press I've seen in a really long time. It didn't have a light. You can see right there where they welded that motor mount at some point. Well, we knew that was coming. I just noticed that truck's got a broken drill bit in it. Now this stuff was in there overnight. Let's have a look at it. Look at how clean that is. That was so rusty. That is looking good. Let's look at this. Oh yeah, look at that. That rust just, I guess it just evaporated just like they said. I should use this stuff more often. Look at that. That is beautiful. Now let's look at this. Oh yeah! So all this stuff needs a good pressure washing. And rather than set up my pressure washer, and I'll leave a card up in the corner to all about that, I'm going to take it down to the coin operated car wash because that's easier and faster. I need to go to the hardware store right next door to the car wash anyway. So the evapo rust, that works pretty quick. That was only about an hour and a half ago I turned that over. And that's just brushing right off now. So that cleaned up pretty nicely. I think we'll just take that down with paint removing scrubber. I swear the people at this shop are real animals. Look at this. 
a broken file in there. This is what a wire wheel does. This is what this paint remover does. I like that a lot better. Now there are a couple of options here. One would be to sandblast this and then powder coat it but I don't trust the guys over at the powder coating place to mask it off right. So what I'm going to do instead is on the bottom where there's lots of nooks and crannies, I'm going to use this CRC rust converter. And what this does, it'll take that rust and convert it into a different chemical, something called fursoferic. This video is further proof that you never know what you're going to see on this channel, but if you click that notification bell, you'll get a notice every time I post something new. Well, the evapo rust and absolutely nothing else just completely freed this chuck. I find that to be rather impressive. Looking here at our adjustment crank, one thing we need to do is to keep that from moving in and out. And the way we're going to do that is with this uh, shaft collar. We'll just slide that on there. I put a brass washer there. We'll lubricate that up and that will be our bushing. Then I will weld that uh, shaft collar onto this handle I've made and then I've got a piece of uh, Delrin that I bored a hole in and we'll just bolt that onto the end. These have to go on together. Oh, that feels good. That is, that is smooth. Well, that broke. Now comes the fun part, construction of a new drill press head. So the next step is to construct a housing that'll hold these, the quill and the lever, and then work out some sort of drive. Now, I've never been a fan of pulleys to begin with. I really like the idea of direct drive. I've been toting around this variable speed transmission for about 30 years. Maybe it's time I use it. Then I've got this 7 to 1 angle drive. Input there and output that hollow shaft there. Maybe I can marry all those things together and have a nice new drill press. But that's going to have to wait for another day because this is all I've got done for this week. I'm happy to answer any questions in the doobly-doo below, so please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video, click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like, and have a good one.